they're going about it a little different way, right? Yeah. You're sitting there going, why is he out? Why is he out? <laughs> I'm thankful the Spurs are tastefully tanking. You know, oh, we, 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 we Speaking talk, of sitting out, <laughs> we talked. Yeah, we talked about the Rockets and their uh, their tactics last week and how we have a little disagreement there. But the Spurs, you know, they're they're developing the young guys. You know, they're playing the competitive brand of basketball. They won some games early in the year, and then against the Clippers, against Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, they say, "Huh, we'll sit." One of our best wings. We'll rest him for injury management. Devin Vassell. We'll, we'll rest our wing. And then against the Lakers, who have Anthony Davis pummeling teams inside, they say, huh, we'll rest Jacob Pertle, our starting center <laughs> for injury management on the back, <laughs> the back. I just thought it was well done, San Antonio. Well done. <laughs> yeah. They, they're going about it a little different way, right? Yeah. You're sitting there going, why is he out? Why is he out? <laughs> they could have done it the other way. They could have had Pirtle out, you know, for, for the Clippers game. And then they could have yes. had Vassell out for the Lakers game. Or they could have played him anyway. But, they wouldn't have uh, accomplished yeah, their goal. Yeah, no. I think, yeah, they're the first one <laughs> to take real measures. Is that yeah, fair? Yeah. Like, if, we're, <laughs> if there's a race towards who's got, like, they started off, they're playing good basketball for the first 10 games. They're popping the ball around. They got 30 assists. They're knocking down threes. And then it's like, all right. Gorgie Zhang, you're in for Pirtle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of crazy because you, you saw all these other guys, right? Like you saw Utah. You've seen this shocking uh, Indiana thing that's going on. Oh, yeah. People already tweeting me, are you raising your blinds yet? Because I said I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the season, I said I wouldn't raise my blinds for a uh, Pacers Wizards game. Hell, that'd be a playoff game as we speak right now. <laughs> I guess I'd have to. But you know, yeah, like San Antonio, they're they were being rather competitive, and they're still playing all the kids. Like the kids, yeah. Like so Sohan is awesome. I, I love watching this too. Jeremy Sohan, one of my favorite rookies to watch right now. Keldon Johnson, you know, he was horrible the other night against the Lakers, but. For the most part this season, you know, still making positive development, getting reps with the ball in his hand. And Devin Vassell playing the best basketball he's ever played. So, you know, you're seeing these young kids get better. Um, and they're uh resting. I agree. Hey, I will, times. It's cool to see. I will say, hey, I will say I agree with you on this front. Because as someone who has covered tanking teams, um I am much more of a fan of not putting enough out there to win off the jump rather than go to the game, winning through three quarters, bench them all to make sure you don't win, right? I don't like it in the in the course of the games. It irritates me much more than if you just field something that can't win, Well, right? I mean, the, the, if you the, the, field something that can't win, it's... Not nearly as bad. I liken it to, right, if you were in the, some football game and then a quarterback went out there and, like, threw an interception on purpose. Like, I don't want to see you actively doing this. Well, Chris, but, the, the, the real art of tanking is the positioning of the players in the court, the plays you run, the lineups you put out there, you know, regardless of who's active and inactive. That That's... That's really where, like, the true artists are. Uh, imagine this. Imagine this. The Spurs were the best at winning for 20 years. Imagine this. They're the best at doing this, too. Just a model franchise. <laughs> they know how to do it. They know how to win correctly. They know how to lose correctly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's going to be re a re really interesting, though, to see how hard <laughs> teams go here because Detroit if Cade is out he's going to be out for some you know I texted you and Jesse about this last week right like if he's out for some extended period of time they're going to be bad right if he gets surgery he's out for the whole year they're going to be locked into one of those bottom three top lottery odd spots because the three worst teams have 14% chances at the number one pick so that means there could be two spots available Odds are Houston's not going to let go of one of those. 
So, I mean, I wonder who that third team is going to be. San Antonio, Orlando. Will OKC turn it around, you know, and start trying to lose games? Or will SGA miss time at some point? Who knows? Utah is so far off right now. I don't think they're going to have any chance of getting there. You know, the, they'll have to, if they do lose and miss the playoffs, they'll have like seven percent, nine percent odds, something like that. Mm. But Detroit and Houston look like they're going to separate themselves. San Antonio is, uh, yeah, I think it's San Antonio and Detroit. I don't think Detroit has a choice. Well, Detroit's going to be horrible, and and out. it's and it started off, you know. They lost Isaiah Stewart. Yep. Now nah, they don't. It's not just Cade. They lost Stewart. They have been playing without Sadiq Bay. Like this had a chance to, with the way they ended the season and them being able to draft, you know, Ivy. It had a chance to be like a a, a hope inspiring season, and in, instead, instead it has gone all, the other direction. You know, yeah. Drastically, the the, the right? silver lining for Detroit is without Cade. Let's say he's out for the rest of the season. You get to see Ivy and Killian Hayes the whole year. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> like uh, this is not like you know. Ha-ha yes, funny. it is. I know it's not. It's it's Ivy gets to be the guy. Yeah, and you and you get to just throw him out there into the fire and say, "Go to work, improve on your change of pace, improve on your playmaking." And then when Cade comes back next year, hopefully he's in a better position to thrive with him. You get to see if Killian Hayes can, without any fear of like having to pull him, if he can actually figure it out as a scorer. Because he's already got the playmaking. He's already got the defense. Can he figure it out as a scorer? He's been better than he's ever been the last seven games, shooting over 40% from three, shooting better from mid-range, getting better at the rim better. If he can keep that up, then you show Killian Hayes can be a real NBA player. So I think the opportunity and the reps those guys will provide, you already know Cade's good, you know, and you want him to get even better, but you already know he's good. Now it's it's time to find out what value do Hayes and Ivy have to the future of your franchise around Cade Cunningham while also having probably the top lot- lottery odds. Yeah. 